Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Survival Games preview. Don't forget to like, to support the channel, and let me take you through the future of survival. You guys absolutely loved my more survival games coming to console recently. I did showing you all the games I know about coming out between 2019 and 2020 still. However, the future of survival is even bigger than that. We've obviously got a lot of games coming to PC and some of these next big hit games could be coming to console as well. And I wanted to show and highlight what I think is gonna be some of the biggest and best, or at least a little bit interesting. So let's crack on and let me show you the future of survival. Last Oasis is one of the few in this video you'll actually get a chance to play before the start of 2020. Developed by Donkey Crew, a bunch of modders from Mount and Blade era, they have been slowly, incredibly working on this new MMO game experience. You'll be fighting for control of water. I've done pretty much a bunch of these videos taking a look at the game in depth and what it offers. Go and check some of them out for more details. But I'm really excited for this one. The release date did get pushed back. It was meant to start at the beginning of September, but they have decided to polish it a little bit more and I think that's a good idea. You're going to be controlling these land mechs, there's different sizes of them, you can also build and customise base building but you have to be ready to move. The world evolves in a certain way, basically making it uninhabitable after a while. You're going to have to jump from server to server, basically land to land, taking halves in the resources to hopefully build better or go ahead and trade. This is a PvP game, but doesn't mean that you cannot just play it on your own. It's not about offline raiding either. They've got components to combat that too. This is all about combat with players online and also running around, gathering resources and building up your own clan, your own empire. Last Oasis is looking pretty special. The combat is pretty unique too. It's directional. It's not going to be like traditional games like Ark or Conan where it's kind of just a little bit button mashing. This is actually going to be a little bit more involved. You're definitely going to have to get used to how to fight. I'm hyped for this. I've got closed Alpha Axis at the moment. I can't say too much more, but just let it be known. This game is exciting me. Last Oasis, 10th October. I can't wait for this one. No survival game list is complete without some zombies and Dead Matter is fulfilling that pledge. This game has been talked about for a while. It was Indiegogo funded, basically crowdfunded a couple years ago. And since then, developers have grown from 2 to 16 currently working on the game. This means it is hopefully going to be shaping up in March 2020 as a closed alpha. I know that seems still far away and that's still just the alpha. We could be looking at the end of the year 2020 before anyone else gets a chance to try it. But I'm really got high hopes for this one. The devs have done a great job in making this relevant. It looks the part. Unlike DayZ, unlike other survival games that are PvP focused too, they really are showing their age. Whereas Dead Matter still looks modern. It is highlighting and utilising most of the most big technology that's out there. And that stands it apart in looks. That's not the only thing they've got to get right though, of course. It is about the combat, it is about the world. And they've got a great location set in North American times. Obviously, you've got zombies running around. You can see there, we're gonna be using our maple syrup, getting our Canadian pancakes, and there's just a whole bunch of good stuff happening. They've been keeping the community in the loop with their dev vlogs, and they're pretty active on social media and in their Discord. These are definitely one of these crowdfunding projects that is probably gonna be worth the time. It's very difficult to get early access right. You only have one launch at it. If you get a big problem with it, like we saw with Atlas, it can all crumble and you'll have a hard time ever getting players back. Even Scum, who sold over a million copies within a month of being in early access, are struggling to keep their player base. So, Dead Matter has to do it in the right way, and I think they're doing it. It is taking longer, they have had some delays, but you've got vehicles that you can drive around. You've got these zombies with unique AI. You've got a great world, you've got a big plethora of weapons, and you're gonna have lots of choice. They're planning it that you can play it single player eventually, they're also having it so you can rent your own servers or host your own servers and you'll be able to literally play and customize and make it a PvE experience. It is very much like games like DayZ where you're running around fighting against other survivors and gathering resources but actually in a much more modern looking engine and it really shows. I think this game looks fantastic even in these alpha test images that they're doing. The devs have definitely made some mistakes, maybe talking a little bit too much about some of the features before they've even actually finalized them. And they've revisited a whole bunch of them as explained in their latest development vlog. If DayZ underwhelmed you with its bugs, problems and issues, if you're sick of the combat and the loops in Ark and Conan, 
then Dead Matter it could be the real deal for survival PvP experience at last. They're now focusing on closed alpha March 20 and I'm hopeful that by the summer they'll have an early access release date. One for the future but definitely on my list as number one survival game I'll be covering. Population Zero is going to be a free to play massive multiplayer game coming very soon it's actually in closed beta at the moment this one is you fighting against other players and creatures upgrading your skills on an alien planet trying to gather rich resources you'll be able to destroy other players bases and build and construct your own settlements all the while studying and exploring the environment searching for clues and understanding of the hostile alien planet that you're on they're calling it a reimagination of the survival genre. Population Zero has undergone a bunch of alpha testing in the last few months, and it had one of them foundation packs that you could buy into. But now, of course, we know it's definitely going to be free to play. This could be one of the few survival games that's actually going to be free to play. It'll be interesting to see how they've got the grind right. As we all know, survival games love the grind. Why haven't they actually ever put that in a free to play scenario? It kind of makes a lot of sense. Let me know what you think about this one. Lots of gameplay footage here from the pre alpha. Of course, lots of things can change. You can see the customization details we've got going on. Lots of armor, lots of cosmetics, lots of things that you come to expect. But it all looks pretty nice and clean. The crafting and placement's pretty simple too. So I'm liking a look at this one. I have got access to the closed beta. Unfortunately, it's under NDA. But I did want to talk about this before I go and jump into it and give you guys a heads up in the future of Population Zero. No release dates as of yet, but I would fully expect this game to hit early access at some point in the next few months since it's having its closed betas running at the moment. At the very least, the start of 2020 is a realistic target for this game appearing on Steam or the Epic Game Store. Not every survival game has to be a clone of Rust or Ark. You've got some really unique stuff coming out, and this one's actually one slated for console, not just PC. This is the Eternal Cylinder. You are going to be controlling one of these really weird creatures. You're going to be running around a huge alien-like world with your Trebhum, that's what it's called, and you'll be basically trying to recruit lots of other creatures to help you solve puzzles and basically discover the big horrible bad boy creature that is destroying the world. It's literally called the cylinder and you've got to find a way to stop it because it's crushing everything in its path. You're actually going to be mutating with your little character here running around trying to discover ways to get through certain areas and puzzles and you can see the great big cylinder approaching that's what you're going to be escaping for it's almost a puzzle survival game but it's definitely something i'm really looking forward to and a little bit fresh a little bit different you'll be able to stack the abilities that you learn and mutate and there's a whole bunch of biomes already currently set it's in closed beta at the moment and there's a whole host of creatures that can either be your friends or you'll have simply use to gather materials from. There are going to be other monsters that will harm you and take you down, so you've got to be very careful about where you go. But the mutations on offer really makes and mixes this game up and makes it something really unique and different. As you can see, I can now jump across the little chasm. Now I've learned to basically do so. This has pretty much been labelled a spore survival game. I'm really looking forward to this one coming out in 2020. Recently I showed you a video that shows and highlights all the survival games you can play as a creature. Well, Day of Dragons is taking that maybe to the next scale. You will be able to control these huge dragons. It's only Kickstarter at the moment, so we're some way off, but I did want to just give this a little bit of a nod. It's absolutely smashed its Kickstarter pledge goals, sitting at £190,000 at the moment currently. And it's still got 11 days to go. People are obviously really super excited about being able to play as a dragon. I'm not going to go too much into details now, it's far too early, but the screenshots and some of the testing that they're showing looks promising. And in terms of different types of survival games, this may finally be able to offer something different to the aisle where you control dinosaurs. You can see from this little test demo, we're actually hatching a dragon egg and we'll be able to run around as a little hatchling. It's looking promising for sure. I really like the environment, it looks really realistic and the dragons look fantastic, the way the skin's showing up on them, really something detailed and very, very different from other survival games. There's gonna be a whole different bunch of dragons that you'll be able to control if judging what the Kickstarter says is true, and definitely really interesting to see where this one is gonna take us. Day of Dragons hopefully coming in 2020, or at least we'll see some more information about alphas and possibly early access then. 
By now you might have worked out I've got a pretty eclectic taste when it comes to survival. It can be all forms, big massive multiplayer, single player experience and really unique. This next game fits into that last category. Trash Sailors is one of them games, a little cute indie game made by a very small team. This is actually coming out on Nintendo Switch as well as Steam very very soon. I definitely want to play this. If you like Don't Starve, if you like maybe a little bit procedurally generated roguelite style games, this is going to be the one for you as you protect your raft. It's a couch co-op game, so you can play it split screen. I don't think you can actually play it co-op multiplayer, although I could be wrong, but you try and survive on your raft as you go through all sorts of different obstacles and fight against other creatures and other trash sailors. Looking really cute. I like the idea of this one. I'm giving this one a shot for sure. Available on Steam right now, as I said, and coming out on Nintendo Switch. Hopefully coming to Xbox and PlayStation as well. It's been three and a half years since Scrap Mechanic first came out and they're still nowhere near closer to getting completed. And that's not that unusual. Look how long it took DayZ and even Seven Days to Die is still in alpha six years later. Nevertheless, people are starting to get a bit frustrated with the length of development of Scrap Mechanic. There's no shortage of videos highlighting all the creative and customizable stuff you can do with this game, which offers much more creativity like you might find in games like Minecraft, or even something a little bit more in depth like Space Engineers. The components where you can build and make your own contraptions are absolutely fantastic with lots of logic gates in it, whole bunch of different systems, but it's the survival mode that a lot of players are really, really looking for. The updates aren't exactly coming thick and fast either, the last one being the 14th of June, but it did talk and highlight some of the more survival elements that are coming into the game. And it's looking hopefully that we may see survival mode finally launch before the end of 2019. Scrap Mechanic is going to have a story to it. It's basically going to start with you crash landing in your vehicle, your spaceship, your flyer. And these are just some of the early screenshots that they've got already planned. I find it really hard to criticise developers of this game. Axelsoft have done a great job in making sure the game is updated frequently at least. Bug fixes are there. But for sure the community are getting a little bit bored now of just creating contraptions. And they want something a little bit more purpose. They could definitely do with ramping up the community updates a little bit more. And it's interesting to know that they're also the publishers of The Raft. So definitely one to keep track of. I'm really excited for the survival mode for Scrap Mechanic. I've sporadically given updates about this next game for the last two and a half years. This hugely ambitious massive multiplayer game is more on the lines of other space sim games where it's about gathering resources and selling them and trading and coming up with grand conspiracies and political intrigue. That's what's on offer in this voxel based world. It's a huge universe shared apparently all in one shard with future technology that means that you can craft and make your own vehicles, you can mine, you can literally go around changing up the environment and the landscape, you can sell the stuff that you're harvesting and you're mining and you can literally build your own empire amongst the stars. V is on a territory of just a massively multiplayer role playing game rather than survival but with the nature of the crafting and the actual gathering of the resources you're going to be putting a lot of grind into this game and that's why I'm quantifying it as a survival. Regardless it still looks fantastic, I am loving the idea of this hugely ambitious game. We've had these promises before, Atlas was meant to hold 40,000 players and it struggled to get barely 60 on the server so let's see if Dual Universe can live up to its promises. Lots of testing has been undergoing, lots of alphas and some betas. It's still very much in early stages, but I think 2020 is the year we'll see a full release date for it announced at least. From space to cowboys, This Land Is My Land is a single player survival narrative driven game. Maybe possibly coming out this winter time in fact. It's looking like the real deal if you've ever wanted to be in the footsteps of a Native American Indian. You'll be fighting for control of 100 square kilometers of land against possible other tribes as well as the American forces, hopefully trying to defend yourself. Surviving, crafting, gathering, it's also a bit of a simulation game. Once you've cleared an area out, you can send and recruit your warriors to defend that area, so there's lots of management of your NPCs too. If Red Dead 2 left you wanting more of the Wild West, but maybe from a different perspective, then This Land Is My Land is definitely going to offer that. It's received a bunch of updates in its closed alpha, and it's going through a beta at the moment, I do believe, so expect this to hit early access this autumn. 
It's not easy trying to sort out what games might come out and what games are still very far away. This is probably one of them ones that might not see the light of day until at least the end of 2020. But Towers drew my attention immediately for its evocative nature and the way that you can encourage creatures to basically settle on your land. This is a very unique survival game that I got a bunch of information from developer on and since I've been in their Discord got even more info. I've done a few videos highlighting, talking, discussing it and the trailer has got hundreds of thousands of views at the moment. All of this is in real time footage, supposedly, as the developers have said. It's a game based on you making the land habitable by making the land, crafting resources and building yourself up so that you can defend yourself against other enemies. There is a NPC force of creatures that will periodically come and attack you. Towers isn't PvP, you're just there building up your own empire, but that does mean you can trade and transfer goods with other players and hopefully be building yourself up against the attacks. That's the winning stage, basically being in a position of power before the enemies start attacking you. You encourage wildlife to come and live in coexistence with you. By making the land fertile, you'll get more creatures appear and then you'll be able to use them and utilize them against the enemy. It's made by a bunch of devs from the Hawken series and I really hope they manage to get funding. This caused a bit of a stir when it got announced earlier this year. They said they were looking to get a lot of interest from some big companies. So hopefully Towers makes it and I'll be talking about this game a lot, hopefully towards the end of 2020. One game maybe not to get too excited about, but there has been some new news, is Wild. And this one is a console game too. This was supposedly going to be made in 2014. It slipped and slipped and we didn't see too much more information about it. It's an open world survival game where you're going to be utilizing creatures and taming them or being able to possibly spirit transfer yourself to them. It is very unique, very different and it's made by the one of the creators of the Beyond Good and Evil series. He's gone on back to make that second game for that and that's why this is maybe put on hold. But recently, as of literally a couple months ago, Ago. Sony have trademarked Wild once more. Maybe it's just to protect their trademark in case they do something with it, but I'm hopeful that this will see the light of day one day. The developer has stated it's still in development, but with so little news and information, it's definitely one of them games to take with a pinch of salt. But for sure, it absolutely looked wild when it first appeared. I really hope it actually makes it. Deadside could be the heir successor to DayZ and maybe even outdo Scum, well maybe not. At the moment it's looking very much like a cross between them two games I mentioned. But one crucial difference, there are no zombies as far as I'm aware. They've got NPC enemies and they're going to have different wildlife and creatures that can attack you. But no zombies, this is more of a realistic military shooter open world survival game. You'll be able to build bases, you'll be able to craft and they're looking at different ways that you can trade with factions and special zones. These zones will actually be PvE friendly so you can go and trade and talk to other survivors without having to worry about being killed on site. So definitely something unique. I really like the idea of this one and as I said it all looks a little bit crisp. Let's just hope it's not just a bunch of unreal assets cobbled together. Lots and lots of dev vlogs have been coming in the last few weeks though so that does show me they're really serious about this and it has got a tentative release date on Steam of 2019 so we'll hopefully see this before the end of the year. Made using the Unreal Engine and as I said it's supposedly a Steam game exclusive look out for Dead Side when it hopefully comes out later on this year. There's something about surviving in space that makes you want to give it a try, even though in the past there haven't been that many great games to really get it right. No Man's Sky took forever to get it exactly where it should be, and there's been a bunch of games that have come close, but maybe been a little bit too complicated. Space Engineers is a great game, and this is very much similar, reminiscent to that. You control droids this time, and it's going to be more focused on the multi-massive player aspect of the game crafting gathering resources and then going off and fighting against other players other factions you can build huge star bases but you're gonna to have to upkeep them or you can rent out your own smaller pods and this is all about how you're going to be playing this game in pvp status like this or definitely crafting and making your own spaceships and doing all sorts of crazy stuff like attacking other people's bases 
it is a little bit bonkers and i am ready for this one a huge mmo let's hope it holds up they've been doing lots of development blogs lots of hype over e3 let's hope starbase makes a big big noise when it launches hopefully at some point in early access the rest of this year we're coming to the end of the video now and i've only got a few more suggestions but this one i'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with it scavengers is going to be a pvp pve experience it's a really popular buzzword at the moment maybe kicked off a little bit by games like hunt showdown as well as brand new games like the cycle basically you're going to be facing off against other players as you land on this planet try and gather resources and try and make it back to a spaceship you can fight against other players or you can help each other out and see if you can both escape together however at any point you can turn there's going to be enemies there's going to be creatures and you are going to have to gather resources that's what makes it a survival game of course the harsh environment doesn't exactly help either so this got shown off at e3 looking forward to this one may be coming out at some point early 2020 scavengers Keep it on your radar if you want a bit more PvP focus, but not absolutely devoting your life to it like Rust or like Ark. Finishing now, look at survival games of the future. High Pixels, High Tail. Yes, yes, I know it's not just a Minecraft mod, and you may be thinking this is not maybe in the same breath as some of them other games. But hear me out, this has got a lot of hype around it. It's got millions of views on its YouTube trailer video. It's made by the creators of the High Pixel Network, a modding community that sprung up making and helping develop the big, big mods and gaming sites you see for Minecraft. So they know what they're doing in terms of building a blocky natured world. It is going to be an MMO but it's got so much more to it and when you look at it it's literally what i think i would want from minecraft 2 better graphics yes still blocky but much more detailed the artistic merit's still there and it's got these much bigger fleshed out role playing elements to it as well but the game has still got that creativity you're going to be able to craft and make and do all sorts of things with this even make and produce your own videos it's going to have its own editing software and the customization is beyond and above anything you've ever seen in a minecraft so lots to fulfill that's the big promise can it deliver we'll hopefully see in 2020 when this game hopefully comes out in early access i'm hyped for hightail and it is going to be a throwback to my minecraft days for sure it's definitely a survival game with that mmo status just running around crafting gathering resources but definitely definitely got more of that hook about you deciding what you want to do with your character looking out for this one for sure so there you go that is what i think of all the survival games that i know coming out hopefully or in some way shape or form alphas and early access 2019 2020 let me know if there's some i've missed i am jade pg for the best in survival news information make sure you've got notifications on my channel and i'll see you rat bags for another one soon